Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. Where is your witness? In the evidence. That's hearsay. It's notarized. I still say it's hearsay. She's fair. You gotta help these young men learn how to do this the right way. Yes, Your Honor. She's firm. Can I say something, Your Honor? No, okay. I don't need to say anything else. She's honest. I'm not your child and I'm not your friend. That's order in the court. Goodbye. This is Justice with Judge Maybelline. All rise. All parties, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Maybelline presiding. Thank you. You may be seated. In the matter of Max and Sarah Caldwell versus Carmen Williams, you're suing Ms. Williams for $600 for a broken coffee table. Uh, Ms. Williams, you're countersuing the plaintiff for a $1,500 deposit on an apartment that you put up for her. Yes. Okay, so let me hear what's going on. Well, I came home from my business trip to find Carmen and my wife packing up the house, about ready to move into an apartment that they had rented. Carmen had somehow brainwashed my wife into thinking that our marriage was going to be over and that she had manipulated her into thinking that this was the right thing to do. Uh, we're pregnant, Your Honor. Manipulated we're her and brainwashed. He's the manipulator, really. No, I don't want you to start talking now. I'm talking. And she brainwashed her while you were away. That's correct. And, con and into moving while you were away. Into moving out. When I got home, I found my coffee table broken. That's the coffee table I mentioned. That's a $600 table. And the reason I want this reconciled is not only do I want the money, I need Carmen to understand not to trifle in our marriage. I need you to know that this is our marriage, it's our love, and you're, you're not a part of it. Hmm. And so this is why this is so important to me today. Otherwise, I would say a coffee table isn't worth, it's not so petty to, to really be concerned and to waste your time over a coffee table, but it's so much more than that to be here today. Ms. Caldwell? Um, I will admit that I have told Carmen everything that went on. We are more than best friends. Deep down, we are sisters. We are absolutely everything. So now tell me a little bit of that everything that was going on. When he went to his business trips, sort of say, we'll call him that, it was really just an affair with his coworker, Madison. Don't call her name. Oh, I'm sorry. Affair with the coworker. Okay. Mm -hmm. Over when, and over. Yes. On the last business trips? Yes. Okay, go on. When he left his phone laying out in the open, a text message came in, and it was from said coworker, and they were extremely flirty. It made me flirty. Lose. Yes. So the messages were flirtatious, saying sensuous type messages? Yes, she would actually tell him that I'm wearing something that I think you'll like, and he said, I can't wait to see it. Okay, now what led to your best friend at your house on this day? helping you move. What did you tell her? Um, originally, I had told her I fell into a cabinet and I had two bruised eyes. So you had two black eyes? I had two black eyes, yes. And how'd you get those two black eyes? Uh, uh, I'd rather not say. I'd rather you say. Him. Stand by, Will. Come on. Stand by. It's not the way I, it seems. I, I, I didn't ask you to say anything. When you say him, you, you're referring to your husband, right? He yes, hit you. Yes, Your Honor. But you told your friend that you fell into a cabinet. Right. I was so afraid to admit the truth. I was so afraid, you know, what would happen to me? Where would I go? But I didn't want the abuse conflicted on me to go to my unborn child. Tell me, Ms. Williams, what did you do? Okay, well, I mean, she didn't have to tell me for me to see the abuse that was happening. You know, before this, there had been several excuses, every excuse you could imagine. The neighbors. Excuse me. Why are you whispering in her ear? I just told her I loved her. <laughs> Don't you whisper another thing to her? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Continue, Ms. Williams. Thank you. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, she's told me that the neighbor's dog bit her, she was burnt by the iron, and when I came to her house, she had the two black eyes, it was the worst condition I had ever seen her in, and I told her, I was like, babe, you can't continue like this, it's so obvious, please, just, you're hurting yourself, you're hurting your unborn baby by not admitting the truth, and she just broke out into complete tears, and I was like, we need to get you out of here. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. So you're quite older than she is? 15 years. So you were 32 when you met her? Yes, Your Honor. You had sexual affair with her at 17? No, Your Honor. We waited until we were eight, till she was 18. And later. And when they find her in the room, she's just a mess, a hungover mess, throwing up. My mom had to take the initiative and tell her, no, sorry, you can't be in this wedding. Like, you're too much of a mess. Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Max and Sarah Caldwell, who are suing Carmen Williams for property damage. Her biggest excuse to me was, I don't know where I would go. I've, of course, offered my own home to her millions of times, but she doesn't feel comfortable. I understand that. No, so, because he'd come to your home and destroy exactly. it and you and her. Right. And so we finally, I found the apartment. I took out of my own savings to to get her this apartment. I was so proud of her. I had never been more proud of her in my life. And honestly, in this courtroom, I'm also so proud of you for admitting your truth to her because it took me months, maybe even years, to get the truth out of her. How long have you all been married? 10 years. They met when we were, me and her were 17. He was our pastor at church camp. Uh so there's never been anything good about this marriage. It was innocent and it was magical. You, the two of you were 17. And he was her pastor. Yep. So you're some. Ooh, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. So you're her. quite older than she is. Fifteen years. So you were 32 when you met her. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sexual affair with her at 17. No, Your Honor. We waited until we were eight, till she was 18. Sarah. I. Don't remember the age. Everything is a blur. We're seeing our pastor now as a marriage counselor. You're a pastor. <laughs> exactly. And if the pastor that you're seeing is anything like you, you don't need to be saying it. You don't need to see him. He's our senior pastor. Mm. Yeah, right. Continue. Exactly. This to me is, it's not about the table. It's not about... So you broke the coffee table trying to get her out? Yes. What happened? Tell me how uh, you What break? happened was um, we were finally moving out and that was like one of the last pieces that we were getting out and he pulls into the driveway. So of course, we're startled. Like our whole plan is now... Shaken. Exactly. And so the table fell out of our hands. So the table fell and you broke it. Was it a glass coffee table? No, it's wooden. Okay. And you put down a deposit of $1,500 on this apartment? I did, yes. I have a picture of the table. So why did you, uh, I, don't, I don't care darn about that table. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mr. Caldwell, your wife is lying about the fact that you beat her and gave her those black eyes? It was a misunderstanding. The cabinet was there. We were doing the dishes, and I actually, we, were, we bumped like this, and that's when she hit her head on the the cabinet. You don't even lie, Will. Now he's standing there saying that he accidentally hit you in the eye with the cabinet. Is that your version of the facts? No, Your Honor, that's not what happened. Now what are you ready to do, Miss, Miss Caldwell? I'm definitely going to change. I'm definitely going to leave this behind and just go towards you know, my best friend, leaning are on her. Moving? Yes, I am, Your Honor. You're going to move out? Yes. Do you I still know, have I the apartment? I really hope that's true. You still have the apartment? Yes. And he's rolling his eye at me. And he's looking like, hmm. Your Honor, we have a happy now, marriage. Now, here's what I, you don't have a happy marriage. You have a, hap, you have a happy marriage to you as long as you're in control. It's happy for you because you do what you want to do. And your unborn child certainly doesn't need to be in that environment. The only thing I caution you, I'm going to issue a restraining order right now. Because the minute you continue to move out, he's going to try to harm you. Yes, Your Honor, I thought. And, and I'm telling you, that restraining order does not guarantee that he won't. But I pray that he won't because he's such a nice man, he's trying to make himself out to be. So I am going to deny your request 
Mr. Caldwell for the $600. Ms. Williams, I'm going to deny your request at the time because you have loaned it to her, given it to her to help her, mm -hmm. and she's going to accept that help. The restraining order is issued that you should not touch Ms. Caldwell, Mr. Caldwell. She better not fall, get one bump, one bruise, one knock, one anything. I am going to say that you caused it. I don't even think you need to leave this courtroom together because I'm afraid for your safety. I want you to walk over there with Miss Williams. I love you. I'm so proud of you. I love you. Please, please, please actually make this happen. I will. And okay. to have the nerve to bring this woman to court over a coffee table because she was trying to help your wife get out of your madness, that shows your level of control is so deep. And to call her the manipulator when it's really you. I know you probably want to hit me. I would never hit a woman. Stop lying, Mr. Caldwell. Stop it. Until you admit what you do and who you are, you can't get help. And you're going to end up killing somebody or yourself, and then you're going to be in jail the rest of your life. No, you have a problem. You need help. Court's adjourned. I want the, uh, the defendant and Ms. Caldwell to exit first, and then you hold Mr. Caldwell here. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. This doesn't stop me from loving you. This also isn't a divorce. Oh, my God. That's the next step. Excuse me. Oh, my God. I'm so proud of you. Coming up. Munchkin, my beloved dog of 14 years, came down with cancer. Munchkin was so, so sick. I spent every dime I had on her treatments. Justice with Judge Maybelline. In the matter of Sarah Smith and Allison Larkin, I understand that Ms. Smith, you're suing Ms. Larkin to reimburse you for hotel and plane fees that you expended for her to come out to be your maid of honor. Yes. And something went wrong. So what, tell me what happened. Your Honor, so I had Allison. Um, we've been best friends our entire lives. We were both from Virginia. We stayed connected even when she moved to LA. So of course, as any girl does on her big day, she wants her best friend as her maid of honor. Fast forward to the night of the rehearsal dinner, the day before the wedding, I noticed she's getting a little too intoxicated, having a few too many. Um, the next morning comes, nobody can get a hold of her. We're blowing up her phone, texting her, calling her, banging on her hotel room door. I had to be in hair and makeup, so I'm sitting there getting my hair and makeup done, but while the artist is literally working on me, I'm crying it off. My entire day is getting ruined. They finally get the hotel to open her door and go in her room. And when they find her in the room, she's just a mess, a hungover mess, throwing up, just gross. My mom had to take the initiative and tell her, no, sorry, you can't be in this wedding. Like, you're too much of a mess. She needs to take accountability. Give me the refund for this friendship because this is not okay. So you paid her plane fare and hotel to come to be uh, at your maid of honor? That and also I paid for her makeup. Okay. Let me hear from you, Ms. Larkin. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to say I'm very sorry for my behavior at Sarah's wedding. Um, however, during the week of her rehearsal, Munchkin, my beloved dog of 14 years, came down with cancer. Munchkin was so, so sick, I spent every dime I had on her treatments. Flash forward, rehearsal dinner night. Um, I didn't let her know, but Munchkin did pass away. Coming up. But you also knew as an adult, the worst thing you could do suffering from anxiety and depression is to start drinking. That doesn't go together. You're right. It was very irresponsible of me. Closed captioning provided by. We're back with the case of Sarah Smith, who is suing Allison Larkin for travel expenses. But anyway, at the rehearsal dinner, I admittedly drank too much. Um, I was wallowing in my pain for Munchkin. Um, this is Munchkin right here. Um, and yes, I do have anxiety and depression. So, however, uh, with your anxiety and depression, has, has it been an ongoing illness? Um, 
It has been troublesome okay, for so some do you time. Have, do you take medication for it? Actually, um, I do. So did you have your medication? Yes, ma'am. Did you take it? Yes. But unfortunately, I did But have... you drank too much on top of taking the medication? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's see, Munchkin. Yeah. You said little Munchkin. That looked like a big old dog to me. <laughs> well, in my eyes, she'll always be my baby. No, I'm not saying he wasn't your baby, but it's not a little dog. I thought it was going to be a little poodle, but that's a big dog. Well, it was a big dog. Yeah, it was. All right, so you were suffering from the loss of your dog, um, anxiety, depression, and didn't let her know. But you also knew as an adult, the worst thing you could do suffering from anxiety and depression is to start drinking. That doesn't go together. You're right. It was very irresponsible of me. Totally. And I... Like I said at the beginning of my statement, I'm very sorry and I'm shamed. I can't believe we're even here over so this since it was, money. It was totally irresponsible of you and you realize that, then why wouldn't you just refund her money? Well, basically what happened was she told me that even though I didn't have all the money and I was going to still come anyway, I was really stressed out. She paid everything. So why she, wouldn't you refund it? Because since she, you acted irresponsibly. Well, Your Honor, she told me that she would take care of everything. She did. She did what she and said she I was going have to do. To, and I didn't have to pay her back. Judge Maybelline's verdict when justice with Judge Maybelline returns. Promotional consideration provided by. She said, I'll take care of everything for you to come to my wedding, for you to be my maid of honor. I will take care of your plane ticket. I will take care of your hotel. I will take care of hair and makeup for you. This is the condition to be my maid of honor on the day of my wedding. She never agreed to pay for you to come and get drunk. I did have a couple drinks. No, 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 now you're gonna go back to a couple drinks. Don't do that. You sat here, you stood there and said, I acted irresponsibly and I had too much to drink. So now don't try to talk it down, you can't. She it's knew, okay that, to she say knew no. the dog was sick. She knew the dog was dying. Okay, you want to put it on her. No. You knew the dog was sick. You knew the dog was dying. You knew you were suffering from that. So you could have said, no, I cannot come to be in your wedding. Then she had a choice of selecting someone else. I'm so ashamed. I'm really so sorry. Just, so just accept the responsibility and reimburse the woman. Come on. I'm sure she'll give you a payment plan. Simple as that. She knows I can't afford it. Okay, judgment for the plaintiff. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $1,120. Right. How about you take the money and use it for a better therapist? Why don't you be a better friend? I'm a great one for the ones I have. <laughs>